Well, hey, welcome to Next Level Carpentry. Here it is, a little shot of the new shop. I wasn't going to do any video in here until I had it cleaned up and better organized. You can see that uh, the dust collector isn't here yet. I'm building some cabinets for a custom uh, walk-in master closet. And uh, dust collector's not here, but I've got to get the cabinets done, so it's gotten a little dusty in here. Um, I'm going to check right now. YouTube on my phone and find out how far the subscriber count is plummeting with all the people who are not impressed by this shop space. It's a very efficient space. It's still a two-car garage like the other shop, but where that shop was two cars wide, this one is two cars deep. Overall, with the higher ceilings um, and windows, it's going to be a much better space, but there still needs to be some efficiency built into it. Um, it's not one of these big caverns like a lot of the YouTube channels are building. Um, so I hope that it'll encourage people uh, by letting them see what you can do in a smaller space where efficiency trumps overall size and volume. The title of the video is not check out the new shop space. The title of the video is searching for the perfect pallets. So the reason I'm shooting this video is because I need to build a door to go in the wall that divides the shop space and the garage space. I've built a partition wall in the shop to separate the space, keep the noise, dust, etc. over here. I've got to admit, I have a bit of a disparaging attitude towards uh, some of the pallet furniture and stuff that I see getting built. But to try to regain a bit of humility in that regard, I determined, you know what, I'm going to build something with pallets. Uh, recycle some wood, salvage some wood, and just see what can be done by building with reclaimed pallet wood. When I decided to build that door out of pallet wood, I decided, well, I'll just drive around town and I'll find some pallets. And it's no surprise really, but all pallets are not created equal. And if I'm gonna take the time and effort to build a door out of pallet wood, I wanna make sure I'm getting the optimal wood for that. So I drove around uh, furniture stores, automotive supply houses, paint stores, grocery stores, everything, looking at the pallets that they had stacked up ready to, for a recycler to take or ready to go to the landfill. And notice that in this part of the country, the majority of the pallets are just made out of pine of random sorts, spruce and yellow pine. Uh, there's some ratty looking Doug fir and stuff out there. But from previous experience, so I've seen pallets were made out of some amazing exotic hardwoods. And I thought, well, I'm gonna see what I can get for this door, see if I can't get some cool looking stuff. And after quite a search of places, I found that the best hunting grounds for these pallets is a local industrial park. All sorts of machines and equipment and materials come into town and uh, a windshield supplier. Uh, there's all kinds of crates. Those are from Mexico. I thought those would be promising, but uh, it turns out that basically a HVAC supply company gets sheet stock on heavy pallets so the metal doesn't bend or whatever. And that wood looks to me like my search for the perfect pallet is over. There's good sized pieces of wood in here. There's fewer nails per board than on a regular pallet where it's machine gun Kelly got loose with a nail gun and shot them together. Uh, the nails are bigger and stronger, so they'll be easier to extract. The pellets are clean. They've not been ground around in the dirt, so it doesn't wreck uh, the, the blades and knives on the machines in here. So I guess I should quit yattering and get to the hunt for pellets. So I'm going to head out through this wonderful hanging cardboard door. What do you think of that? i got three hinges in it. That means three sheetrock screws and a piece of lath to hold this door. So I'm going to head out to the truck and uh, we'll go find some pallets. An industrial park can be a good place for pallet mining. There's some here, it's all pretty ratty, pretty pine looking. Plus, I don't know if I have access to those. Some of these get recycled. Sometimes they hang on to them. There's masonry guys here. Use a lot of their pallets for moving stuff around after jobs are over. Perfect place is somebody that gets pallets and has to pay to get rid of them. You can swing in on a deal like that. Not only do you get pallets, but they love you because you're saving them money. Oh, there's some pallets there. Check those out. Some nice long pieces. I don't know who these belong to yet, but as it turns out, they're mostly just two by fours like you get from the lumber yard. That one on top looks promising. Almost looks like it's got some curly cherry in it there. It just might be the way it's cut. This runner here is a piece of eight quarter oak. 
But being there's, there's only one candidate in the pile, I don't think I'm going to look into getting permission or get that pallet down from there and tear it apart. There's a pile of pallets there. I checked those out the other day. There's nothing in there worth digging for or using for this project. They might be good for other things. A few pallets under a shed there. They're broken up. They would be material for another project. Right up the street here, there is a windshield installer company. I drove around here yesterday and notice all these pallets from the windshields hanging out here. And this all looked pretty promising on a drive-by, but close inspection shows that although it's pretty nice clean wood, it's all thin, it's all pine or fir, which isn't what I'm after for this project. So here is a HVAC supply place. We've got some of these long pallets, apparently for sheet goods, that should make good material for that new shop door. This one on the bottom here, it's got some cherry 4x4s that should work. They asked me if I'd leave one of the long ones. So that means I can take one and leave one. The rest of these things are just a little too ready for our purpose. These tools I call my weapons of mass destruction that I may or may not need for tearing pallets apart. Probably can't see it in the video, but the four by fours on this pallet, that is solid cherry, folks. Let's see what we can do with this. When I think of something that could be called the perfect pallet, that's what I think of. It's four cherry 4x4s, four four, more or less. These pieces are oak or ash of some sort. I'll pull the nails out of them later. said earlier, bigger pallets have fewer nails. They're easy to pull out and clean up. Again, as they're doing me a favor, give me these pallets. I always want to leave the place better than when I found it. Everything in here is mostly pine and a couple thin pieces of oak, but they're pretty split up, so we're just gonna leave them. Now we're off to the next pallet supply house. There's a nice looking pile of pallets, but it looks like somebody's saving those. They're not pine, but they're not hardwood either. Maybe they're poplar or something like that. Well, I have to keep shopping. I already pre-screened this stuff, but when I swung by here the other day, there were some awesome long pallets in this pile over here. And I am completely bummed out to say that it appears the pallets I most wanted in this hunt that were laying there the other day, somebody else snarfed them up before I could get over here with the camera. Well, that's a complete drag. There was two long pallets here and they were built out of solid cherry 4x4s. It appears they are gone. Leaving me these guys. Middle piece looks like cherry. These are some kind of ash or oak, so they're worth taking. But it isn't the gold mine I was expecting. Well, beggars can't be choosers. A lot of my tools have names, and this particular hammer is named Thor. Like the Viking guy, Thor. But actually, whenever I hit my thumb with this thing, it gets really Thor. In the big picture, that piece right there is worth the drive today. Some good wood in there. This heartwood, which makes the piece split, twist, and cup is the reason it got used for a pallet instead of a piece of furniture.
but with the marvels of modern woodworking machinery and equipment, I can spend the time to clean it up and get useful wood out of there when the hardwood mill just can't justify the extra time it takes or the potential for that wood to twist and warp in a finished product later. So they turned it into pallets. That's good for them. And this is good for me. I think I'm going to gamble on these pieces. I might take them all the way back to the shop only to find their ugly junk and I'll give them to somebody for firewood. But there just might be some sweet looking lumber down inside there that's worth tearing apart. Go Thor, go! And this is nice wood here, but like I said, the real nice pieces were in the ones that somebody else got. Once upon a time, I might have been tough enough to hang on to that. Not today. So I'll just do it like they did in the old times. A little bit of counter leverage gets the job done. Now, if somebody's following me down the street and sees this load of lumber in the back of the truck, there's two things that are going to clue them in that I didn't just come from a big box store. The first thing is that there's some nails sticking out of this lumber. And the other thing is that a lot of what you see in big box stores these days isn't nearly this straight. It's time to roll. And as a teaser for things to come, I'm going to do a panning shot of the inside of the shop. So you can see the issues that I'm facing to get this space optimized. The other garage that you've seen in all the other Next Level Carpentry videos, I grew into that organically over 35 years. So everything had its place. I knew where everything was. It was packed in there, but it was very efficient. Uh, this is disarray because I haven't built the drawers and shelves that I'm going to yet. There's a lot of things I'm going to call out of here, but in the meantime, it's pretty much haphazard disarray. But um, when you see the cabinets that I'm building, I can still get some productive work done in here based on the familiarity with, with the tools I do have. And um, it'll just only get better when the dust processor gets here, as I get tools parked in their place and excess supplies and materials stowed away in some nice drawers. So here's that panning shot. I repurposed my old red snap-on toolbox from, oh, close to 45 years ago. Bought a couple of these Master Force ones because of their convenience and their value. Some of the shelving in here is existing shelving. The bench with the welder, that's pretty much going to go away, I think. I've got a piece of cardboard in this door opening at the moment to keep the dust from migrating quite so much. This overhang part here is a shelf on the other side. It'll have storage drawers underneath it. Everything in the old boxes that sat on shelves in the other shop is going to go into some custom-built drawers that mount on the wall under this overhang place. So when I'm done, there'll be no boxes in here anymore, but the same material will be here stowed away. Piles of boxes awaiting organization. There's the Next Level Carpenter pencil. I'm going to be doing a build video on that before long. The stars on the pencil are Mrs. Next Level Carpentry messing with me and making me smile when I'm out in the shop. All these tools will have more efficient storage space. You see the space is long. The table saw moves around easily here. These are the lower drawer units of this master closet cabinet project that I'm doing. Behind here 
is the upper units that'll have adjustable shelves in them. Those pieces stack and then float eight inches off the floor. Behind the table saw is all the melamine material for making those drawers and uh, the shelves for them. And I just may do a video for building melamine drawers before I get to that pencil build video. See how things roll out. Now that I've come full circle, one day I will show you the view outside the window beyond those wooden blinds. It makes me smile with contentment just looking out there. And up there is a fantastic heater. It's three times as big as it needed to be for the full garage. So it's oversized by a factor of I don't know what for this space. But one thing is for sure, I'm going to be toasty warm in here this winter. Well, I didn't give any thought to how I was going to end this, so I don't have any video to go with this wrap-up segment. What you're seeing is me in the shop denailing the pallet wood once I got it back to the shop, separating the pieces and pulling the nails, using a few tips and tricks and special tools to get the job done. I can do a video showing that process. If viewers let me know in the comments, it's something they'd be interested in. If you found this video interesting, I hope you'll consider subscribing if you haven't already. It's free and you'll be the first to know when new Next Level Carpentry videos are produced and uploaded. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming up, so I hope you'll stay tuned and stop back by when you have a minute. And until then, as always, thanks for watching and happy pallet hunting.